When I grew up in the 70s, we didn't even have a coffee pot in the house. My dad would make instant coffee every day, which I guess was pretty popular back in the 70s. But we kids, we were not allowed to drink coffee. Mom said it would stunt our growth. And when she grew up, she drank something else that was supposed to be safer for children. We're going to talk about some of the things that I grew up without and how growing up without those things has helped me during this time of inflation. Hello everyone, I'm Bonnie to From Pennies to Dollars, and if you don't know me and this is your first time here, welcome. We have a lot of new viewers. I'm excited to have you all here. Thank you to all of you that tune in to me for all of my videos. I appreciate you so much. I am from rural Kansas, and I was raised by Depression-era parents. Many of the things that happened during their lifetime were very transitional and affected the way that I was raised. A lot of things that we look at day-to-day -day in the stores when we shop just weren't available in my time or in their time, or were just being developed, so they were brand new, and their parents stuck with the old ways so therefore my parents stuck with the old ways and passed a lot of those old ways on to me as well as you can see i'm making coffee behind me i learned learned how to drink coffee in my mid 50s i always thought it smelled wonderful but i never stood the taste of it i never could understand why people liked it and i think the reason was is i wasn't allowed to drink it growing up my mom was very firm that we were not allowed to have coffee or tea growing up and it was because she said it would stunt our growth now i don't know where that came from and maybe it's true because my brothers grew to be six foot three six foot four six foot five and i'm five foot ten so maybe there's some basis to that i don't know but she and her brothers and sisters grew up drinking postum let me know if you've ever heard of this it is made out of wheat germ and molasses ground wheat and my grandpa would take his wheat about an hour away by car only he had horse and wagon to get his wheat ground into wheat powder wheat germ and then they would roast that add molasses and you could brew it like a non-caffeinated coffee post cereal actually made this back in the day when they were called postum cereal company and it sold until 2007 and then in 2007 they discontinued it but since that time another company has bought the rights to that and you can still buy it on amazon in fact my aunt who's 83 years old, told me her kids bought her a jar of postum, that they found it and bought it for her, and that she's been drinking it. They added hot milk to this, and she said it tasted more like a hot chocolate, and that's what the kids drank. Postum was introduced in about 1895 as a type of health food replacement for coffee that was non-caffeinated. So this may take you way back in your history, but it also may remind a few of you of some things that you might have had or saw your grandparents have when you were growing up. Now, these are the dishes that I grew up with in my home when I was young. And these are the dishes that my mom used to serve us desserts. As you can see, they're about a four ounce dish. They followed the serving sizes big time back then. She would make pudding, and this is how much pudding that you would get, would be this small four ounce dish. 
things have really changed as serving sizes have gotten bigger, people have gotten bigger as they have eaten to their heart's delight rather than just eating what was given to us and was portioned out for everyone in the family and there were not seconds. I never was introduced to soda or pop until I was in junior high, which was in the late 70s, when my older brother, who was 14 and a half years older than me, took me out to my first pizzeria. I had my first pizza and I had my first soda pop. I can't say that I thought the soda pop was good. I thought the fizz was really weird. But as you know, I now like Diet Pepsi, so I adapted to that. But my first soda was actually a orange or a grape. And those were the flavors that were introduced to us as kids back then, not the cola flavors that you see today. I didn't grow up with candy, with chips, with packaged foods in the kitchen. Those were things that we just didn't have available. And a lot of that was because some of those things weren't even sold or were just beginning to be sold. Like packaged granola bars, they didn't come out until the 70s. And so we didn't have things like that. We didn't buy those things. When we walked into our grocery stores, they looked so much different than they do today. The only crackers I grew up with were saltines and oyster crackers. Can you imagine how many crackers are now in the aisles of different flavors and different textures and different shapes? We didn't have anything like that growing up. Those were your two choices and we were satisfied with that. We had no individually packaged foods. We packed our lunch from the kitchen, we used containers, and those were the things that we took with us when we went to school to package our lunch. There weren't any Lunchables until about 1988, if you can believe it. So I went to school packing my lunch with no Lunchables and we didn't have all of these individually packaged snacks that now make it so easy to pack your lunch or to send lunches with your kids to a picnic. Those things just were not around or just were not in our kitchen and they're still not in my kitchen. The only packaged noodles that we had in our house were spaghetti noodles. My mom made our homemade noodles. My dad didn't like cheese, so we didn't grow up with macaroni and cheese, which is very common in households today. I never had boxed scallop potatoes until I was an adult, and then I thought they just tasted like a horrible, cheap substitute for the real thing. We had scallop potatoes every single Sunday with fried chicken after church. My mom had a set menu, and based on what day of the week it was, you knew what you were going to eat because we had a very simple menu. We bought all of the same things and every day of the week, each week, we had the same foods, but we were satisfied with that. We enjoyed those foods. They were ones that we all liked. And so they weren't something that you would say, oh no, tonight is fried chicken. How horrible. <laughs> I mean, it was always like, yay, Sunday is fried chicken. The only repairman I ever saw come to our house was to replace the picture tube in our television two times over my life. There weren't any plumbers, carpenters, there wasn't anybody coming to our house to fix anything because dad was responsible for that and he's the one that fixed everything and he always figured it out. I never got new school clothes until the 80s when I was old enough to babysit and use some of that money to go out and buy myself a new shirt. Having new school clothes actually was not part of our routine at all. A lot of my friends did go out to get new school clothes. But if you look at the history of that, which I'm going to link in the description box below, Back to school shopping was first introduced by Montgomery Ward in 1944. And then Sears also talked about back to school shopping in their 1967 catalog. 
this has now become a billion dollar market to introduce back to school sales. And these sales start earlier and earlier every year with manufacturers starting to roll out the back to school sales in May and June when school is just letting out or has just let out. And in 2023, Americans spent $42.3 billion on K through 12 back to school sales and 36.4 billion on back to college sales. Usually by August, families have already purchased half of their back to school purchase plans for the season. So did I grow up doing without? Absolutely not. I had everything I needed. I had clothing, I had food, I had shelter. We had running water that was clear and fresh, and we had heat in the winter. We did not have air conditioning in the summer. Nothing like that was around, but we had box fans. Now, if you don't have electricity or water hooked up to your house in the city, they actually can say that your house is not livable. When my parents grew up without electricity and with a hand pump out in their yard, we had what we needed growing up. We had a toilet that would flush. We had all of the basics. And I never felt like we went without. In the summers, did it get super hot in the house? It absolutely did. But that was just the way it was. That was what you knew was coming. It was summer. It was going to be hot. And we just learned to deal with it until the temperatures cooled off again. So as we look back at the ways we were raised and the way kids are being raised now, in fact, my grandsons in their teens drink coffee. <laughs> Lots of people drive through Starbucks with their kids and get them coffees. So is it because we went without things back then? Or is it because marketing and social media has now changed what we think is necessary, what we think is normal, and what we purchase with our hard-earned dollars? When I grew up, it was very normal to go to the jewelry repair man or to go and get new soles put on your shoes or your boots. My husband took his boots that he works in out in the yard and he got new soles put on. And as you can see, his boots are still in good condition. He got new soles. Look how great those soles are. Very heavy, very good soles. $16. So it's still possible to tap into some of those old ways. If you're familiar with them and if you are knowledgeable of them, many people wouldn't even think to do something like that these days. So did I grow up without? Absolutely not. I have very fond memories. I still use many of those practices today. And I feel like those practices have been the difference between me struggling during inflation, like a lot of people that I know, and not struggling during inflation. I hope this video has been interesting for you, maybe brought back a few old memories, or maybe brought back some stories that you've heard from your parents or grandparents. I appreciate you all being here so much. I have a couple of depression era cookbooks that I've written with my family's favorites. If you would like to help out the channel, the links are in the description box. Thank you for watching today and I hope to see you in the next video.